Okay, so this topic is a short one. It's about um, error handling or structured error handling. And it's not our most exciting topic, I admit, but it's necessary for a professional polished program, and I'll show you why. So let's say, for example, I have a, a pizza and um, there are 34 slices, I've, a large pizza. I've cut it up Chicago style in the little squares. I've got 34 little squares. And then I'm going to invite five of my colleagues to the office to to, um, to have a mini pizza party. And I'm being told that each guest can have seven slices of pizza. Okay, that seems like, um, actually, I probably should have done some floor division there. But in any case, um, that's not what this is about. So let's, uh, let's pretend that I accidentally um, entered alpha data for the number of slices and right away the program bombs this is called a value error so there are the various types of like kind of predefined scenarios of things that can go wrong with a program and one of these is a value error when your program is expecting a certain type of input like numeric input and then you enter text data or string data and then the program doesn't know what to do with it so for example you know when i enter a number like 30, let's say I had 30 slices. This comes into your program as a string, but then we try to, uh, well, we don't try, we do. We, we cast that to an integer on this line, and what it does is it parses the value. When I parse a string, I just basically pick through the string character by character, first the three, then the zero, and convert that to numeric type or an integer type in this case. Now, if I enter something like this, some sort of alpha data, then it can't par it tries to parse these characters into numeric data and it just doesn't work. It doesn't work. So that's where the value error comes into play. So what we can do is add structured error handling to this so that we can what we would call this catching an error. I don't know if Python uses that terminology, but here's what we're going to do. We're going to wrap our code in a try block. Okay, so I'm going to um, put the word try there. It's, it's kind of like, hey, let's try this. Okay, and then I need to bump this in because this is Python and indentation matters. And then in um, in other languages, this is called a catch block, but Python uses the word accept. This is also called an exception. Your program the program throws an exception. It means something went wrong. Okay, in this case, you know, well, it's a it's a runtime error. So we're going to catch the value error here so we can give the user at the very least a friendly message. You saw the error message that that happened when I didn't have structured error handling and it was something that a layperson could never understand the value error they're like value error what the heck is that so let's uh, let's try it now so let's say I, I enter the wrong thing okay and you can see I caught the exception and I'm giving the user some specific feedback about what went wrong. So this is what I mean, like a polished professional program anticipates the user making this, you know, crazy error, either intentionally or unintentionally, and then having ways to handle that error. Here's another possibility. Okay, so for example, let's say I have um, 30 slices of pizza and then I accidentally enter zero for the guests. Okay, we threw another exception. This is a zero division error or divide by zero because I can't divide by zero. The number of guests was zero. Okay, so that's another exception that I can handle. And you can pile these accept clauses on top of one, one another. So the, the code that could possibly generate an error goes in the try block. And then the accepts, you kind of stack on top of one another at the bottom. So I've got the value error. We know that works. Let's try the divide by zero error. Okay, number of guests must be greater than zero. Please start over. So you can see. And then typically you'll see like a generic catch-all. Typically I'll add a kind of this catch-all except. So this is just accept. I'm not accepting a specific type of error just 
a generic accept. And then if there's something that could have gone wrong that I have not anticipated, then this one will catch that. This one will catch that. Okay. So, um, yeah, that is, uh, those are some basic exceptions. And um, I think I'll do one more video and I'll show you how to do a custom exception.